Classic Conversations with JT and Lowe. You never know which way to wrap. Classic, classic conversations, conversations with JT and Lowe. You never know which way the rhetoric is gonna go. Genius, so no conversations and with JT and Lowe. Yeah. Classic conversations with JT and Lowe. You never know which way the rhetoric is gonna go. Classic conversations with JT and Lowe. You never know which way the rhetoric is gonna go. Classic conversations. Technical difficulties. Somebody was in a closet, couldn't get out the closet. So here we Public are, people. <laughs> I can't say it is such and such time and this time for classic conversations. All I'm gonna tell you is right now it's classic conversations with JT and Lowe. And that's a cop. Man, we're about to get this thing going. As you can see, it's just me and Asa Cop tonight. Angelo is fulfilling his no. duties as the husband and the great father that he is. He's spending Christmas out of the city of Atlanta. You know, let him do what he got to do. Hopefully he'll tune in a little later. But if he doesn't, I totally understand. Because as I just said, he's spending time with his family, people. Got to let us have our own lives. But listen, man, I need for y'all to tune in. As you tune in, I need for y'all to hit those buttons over there to the right. Everybody that was on my live, I'm hoping that you're seeing this right now. Flip over. Come on over to the live live and we get this thing going. Hit those buttons over there, the love button, the like button. Hit the care button. You can even cry or be mad with us. Any button that you hit is going to help our algorithm <laughs> go up. <laughs> good job, dog. Yeah, good job. Yeah, good, yeah. Off, good job. Good I'm job. not surprised. Shit, you know, I do it all the time. Hey, listen, man. This is the last show of the 2023 calendar year. We want y'all to be a part of it. We're going to have a good time. We starting late, so we're gonna try and whiz through this thing. So give us a call, man. Be a part of it. 404-500-1605. As I've told you in the past, Amazon Music, YouTube, and also Spotify. Man, go hit the buttons. Hit the button to follow and subscribe. Then you hit the other button that says share. Share usually has a little error on it. Just hit that button, share it, and send it to all your friends. Just send it to a couple of friends. Either way, it's gonna help us, man. You need to get in while you can, because right now we're free. Subscription is free. But you know, free don't usually last long. My man. What up? How was your week, bro? Excellent, man. It's, you know, just family. Mm -hmm. uh, they threw down on New Year's Eve. Food was excellent. Christmas Eve. Well, Christmas Eve, my bad. I'm thinking ahead, thinking ahead. Yeah, he, he, no, he wait. You're Christmas, already gone. Wait. Christmas Eve was good. Christmas uh, Food was good. Fellowship. It was, just, it was just good. I really enjoyed it. Okay, good good deal, man. My, I, I can't complain either. Um, yeah, I, I did a lot of drinking, a lot of drinking, a lot of eating this past weekend. Um, just um, not drinking, not drinking this week, not drinking at all until. It, uh, oh God, I'm trying to do it to Friday, but Thursday is gonna be rough because my Tar Heels place gonna be rough. But yeah, um, great weekend, man. Spent some some um, time with some friends. I went out um, uh, Friday night. Went out, smoked some cigars with some other couples, and we actually sat around and had some great conversations, speaking of things that we were thankful for. You know, um, you know, thankful for your spouses, thankful for the cigar, thankful for friends, things of that nature. Uh, Saturday night, my man Dwight, Dwight Bivens, what's up, bro? He, um, my neighbor, he's been a friend of the show. Um, he had a party. Um, yeah, he, he, he does. He, when he does it, he does it. Ended up out at his house about 3.30 in the morning, sitting around his um, fire pit drinking. Um, <laughs> then Sunday, um, same folks we went on the cabin trip with that I spoke about before, them damn greens, what's happening? Um, went to their house and um, did the little gift. What is it, the green elephant thing? I came up. Who? White elephant. White elephant. I said green because their last name is green. Yeah, see, I, I need to drink. If I was drinking, I could think better, but not going to do that. But yeah, did the white elephant thing, man, and I came out. I came up great. Mm -hmm. I came up great. Uh -huh. Got me a nice little glass set. Got me the the, the um the sphere. 
ice maker would make mm -hmm. man I, I yeah I came up and I was number five in a group of 20 something I sat inside for a little while then I walked outside <laughs> so they would forget about mine and then wouldn't nobody come and get it <laughs> my wife she came up pretty good too I hate to say it though she took she took her gift from a little seven-year-old she felt <laughs> kind of bad till we got in the car and we talked about what it was I was like hey yeah, yeah, good, good. <laughs> so yeah we yes, smiled on about that Christmas was great man we actually we chilled um, didn't didn't want to get out and do a whole lot. We chilled at the house. Um, you know, did the breakfast thing, did the cooking thing. You know, mm -hmm. I love cooking for my wife. She I saw you posted. The yeah, breakfast yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like get like did a little frying because it was raining all day. Wanted to grill but couldn't do it. So you know that's what that's what it was there. You know, you're what, a real grill man. You don't let that rain stop you, brother. Um, is... well, see, um, yeah, yeah. I, I just didn't want to be walking Umbrella. back and forth outside. I ain't want to be oh, walking back and okay. forth outside. Okay, you're a real grill I, man. I just, okay, I just didn't want to do it, so I. You know, grab that that deep fry and drop some fish and drop some chicken. But that'll that. work too. Get a little honey. Like yeah, no fried yeah, fish. Yeah, yeah, bro, what that's on point. About? I wish I'd have made more fish. I made more chicken and fish. Bro. Uh, gotta go with the um, fish, bro. It's an idea. I might do I'll that tomorrow. Some light bread. Oh and, my and, god! And, right. That's all you need. You don't need no side. No, 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 no side. With you, need, I'm with man. you on that. Listen, man. We, we talked about this before we got going, so we're gonna go ahead and jump on this here. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if y'all have saw it, but um, my man Tyrese. You know, dropped out at a um, show, at, at an award show, and on the red carpet, <clears throat> he stepped out with what appeared to be a red dress. Um, had a blazer on with it, scarf. He was he was kicking it or whatever. Um, you know, my my thing with it is is the questions I want to ask is you know, do you think that fashion has gone too far? And then also, do you think some people actually hide behind fashion? Using fashion as an excuse to show who they really are. What you think about that? Uh, I'm, I'm not a real fashion type dude, but uh, I say I'm not to each his own. I think that a lot of people express themselves themselves through their clothing and how they are, and I think that's a wonderful thing in some cases. I didn't see the picture. I didn't. I don't follow Thais, but when you showed me the picture, it looked like a dress to me. <laughs> but I've also you know, Thug Nerd showed me a picture of him in um, <laughs> Saudi Arabia, and he had on the Muslim uh, the outfit. The top, the yeah, top, yeah, the top the of the head. head, head piece, and it yeah. looked cool, but on the one that you showed me, it looked like a dress and he was wearing a fur coat. But the other one, he looked cool. So to me, it's each his own. I don't care. You know, I don't know the dude. So whatever you like, I just think, you know, I think it's real cool to an extent. I just have an issue when it gets to be exposing or some shit like that. So if you want to wear a dress, that's your thing, that's your thing. You know what, you, you brought something up great right there though, um, in regards to exposing things. Because, um, you know, let's face it, you know, women have more to expose. Yes, you know? yes. Um, and when they expose it, you know, of course they get some detractors, but a lot of people, it's usually more for what they have on, not only from a, a man looking at it, seeing what they usually wouldn't be able to see, but because it's daring and they're able to do something like that. Yeah. Now, back in the day, the only man I noticed really exposed, other than a chest, you know, the <clears throat> only man I noticed really exposed something fashionable, fashionably, I can't even say fashionably, within the realms of fashion was Prince. Yeah. When he had his booty cheeks <laughs> So the reason why I say that is because <laughs> Ron Godfrey, <laughs> Ron Godfrey, what up, bro? I see you tuned in. Um, but yeah, you know, when you said, you know, in regards to, you know, as long as it's not exposing too much, would, you say, you, so. would you say there's a difference between, or there's a line between what a woman can expose and it be considered tasteful or fashion and a man can expose? Well, yeah, definitely. You got two ends of the spectrums. You got like a, Slutty red, no, sexy red, and you have Megan Thee Stallion. You got two total, diff two totally different women doing the same thing, but one does it with class, and the other was, well, she's sexy red. You know, so okay. I think the way a woman carries herself has a lot to do. Some women can get away with it because mm -hmm. of the way they carry themselves. Mm. Good I hope you're hearing that, Megan. Good point, good point. Because of the way somebody carries themselves, they might be accepted more in their fashion, fashion choices yeah. than someone that carries themselves in a 
risque way. And then they come out with certain things. People probably look at that as being a bad choice, nasty, raunchy. Yeah, plus you got to look at the total overall of the person. Like, you know, Prince was known for that. Michael Jackson was known like the one, the one glove shit, you know. Everybody's got a different vibe. And you had people just like, just always dress a certain way that's more manly, you know. Not just saying that's not manly, but you know, more mainstream. So, you know, Mr. Roundtree back in the day, Denzel, you know, um, yeah, just, you know, just, just different levels of stuff. I see, just before we started this thing, you said, man, I'm not really a guy to fashion. Look at you, boy, you done dropped some points. You done dropped some, some gems out there. I see what happens. Oh, classic uh, conversation. Listen, man, we're gonna be back. We're gonna talk about New Year's, you know, your New Year's resolutions. We're going to talk about why it's so important. Why do you have to do it? Why do people actually do it at all? Or if you believe in it at all. Classic Conversations with JT and Lope. That's a call. We'll be right back. Classic conversations with JT and Lope. And that's a cop. And we are back. We are back. Listen, man. Listen, and we're joined man. by. We got a special guest. Yes, you, yes. Up you know, got a special guest. Um, I think I, my mics is hot. I don't see. There we go. There we go. Um, I see it here, but I don't see it there. Okay. So we're going to keep I'll it moving. Straight. We got a special guest in, in the building. He's always been in the building. He's, he's special, but at the same time, not really special because he's always been in the building behind the scenes, making this thing work. Am I breathing on the mic? You know what I'm saying? So right now, man, I want to introduce my man, Benjamin the Guru. How y'all doing? I just call him Thug Nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, people. Where's my camera? There it is. <laughs> Hello, people. <laughs> Stay frosty, Atlanta. <laughs> but yeah, thank y'all, man. I appreciate y'all for having me actually on here and... Uh, I figured I'd weigh in today, you know. And, I appreciate you, bro. You know, appreciate you weighing in. Appreciate help you us along. Help us along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, we're going we're gonna to jump into something. I'm glad that you stepped up here because, um, as you can see, I'm wearing my hip-hop shirt. You know, you know, old, mine says old school hip-hop. Can't see that part on it, but it says old school hip-hop. As you know, we're in the 50th, 50th, year, 50th year of celebration of hip-hop. And, you know, there's been a lot of benefits, been a lot of shows, all across the nation. Of course, we couldn't see them all, all of them weren't televised, right. but the one consensus that I came across all the time is that a lot of people was being left out. Now, even on some of the shows that was televised, what I noticed is that it was always about the old school hip hop. To my excitement, I loved it. Every last minute of it, I danced, I lost weight, it was great. <laughs> but as the year went on, I noticed that they tried to start including some of the new era mm -hmm. hip hop artists in it. Um, I mean, some of the newer, I was looking at some shows, I didn't know who some of these folks was. After I, I always record them so I can go back and look at it again. You know, some of them actually can spit, some of them actually is gimmicks, nice. but let's not get it twisted. We had gimmicks back in our day. Gimmicks were being highlighted. Somebody yeah. from my spot made yeah. it. That's real. And, and you know, you was happy about it. That's real. E even if you knew what the words were, you still was happy <laughs> about it because, I think, no, they used to live down the street. I think also, though, yeah. but it was more real back then because, like you alluded to earlier, it wasn't any corporate sponsorship yeah. or it wasn't like they were trying to exploit it. I think the people that were just, it, it was all real back then, yeah. like public in the KRS one. People were like hitting things that mattered to the community. Mm -hmm. And then I think if you speed it up to now, it's been hijacked by yeah. corporate entities that say, okay, you guys put this out. And it got to the point that I think it got slutted out. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, and it got yeah. to the point where, now I'm, I'm not saying it don't flow, but there's so many rappers that are so talented, if they put a more Karras one approach to it, right. they would be just as hot. So, so. So do you think they'd be just as hot right now, especially with hip hop being a thing where it, you know, rapping, rap in general being a thing where it is geared towards younger people 
and right now most of the younger people are gearing towards you know the different i guess slangs like we just found out what slurs meant the other day um but do you think it would be I'm trying to figure out my question shit do you think it's one of those things where if you had like a KRS one out right now, do you think he could have or she could have that effect on the youth? Like oh, he definitely. Did? I think they definitely will. Because I think the one thing that the beauty about rap, if you can rap, right. you're going to be still on. Right, right, now, right. people that might not like your rap, but for everyone that doesn't like, they're going to like it. And I just think it would be a different point of view because you got to remember when Public Enemy came out right. and everybody's like, oh, ooh, and then when you listen to Public Enemy, you're like, damn. It was so deep and so real. You got to look at, you had NWA, which was right. the start of the infected rap, and they put it out there. <laughs> they put it out there in a negative connotation. Right. But Public Enemy was saying the same thing, but they were like Make pointing sure. out, no, it's, this is I, I got wrong. timing on this topic. And they, and they made it a negative to it. And it's like it was almost right. like fair con with some polish. I got you. And I just think it was real. I think that would go over... Anytime, I think it would probably be the thing that could bring us closer and bring because there's a big divide now with us. Right, right, right. You, you have a have and a have nots in our community, and I think the right rapper that comes out, they, no, the rappers don't have to come out. They're there now. A lot of them that are talented enough to switch it over and speak more towards positivity instead of negativity. But who's gonna pay for that? Wait, I just on. think it's gonna we, sell itself. We got a caller, but um, because of the way it's set up now. Mm -hmm. You actually don't need corporate America because of everything that's, that right, you can right. stream now. I think because KRS One for the longest has been underground. Right. At the beginning, his music was played, but then they stopped it. Now you couldn't stop his music from being played. That's true. Because stuff could be streamed. I think it would really, really help. Yeah. Um, caller, go ahead and speak your name and speak speak your case. Hey man, it's nobody else but Low. What up? <laughs> Angelo, low down. What's happening, brother? You, you know, I, you know, I couldn't let a hip hop topic come on here and I don't say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I knew when so, KRS One came up, so your ears was ringing. <laughs> yeah, you, that's right. That's right. All day. Uh, hey, man, listen. These, these young guys don't deserve to be considered in this new, in the in the hip hop 50 anniversary celebration, because the junk is not hip hop. It's a it's a, it's a bunch of blibbly blibbly, you know. Uh, I I don't consider none of stuff actual hip hop. What's, what's I don't even think they consider their stuff hip hop. What's 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 the definition? Um, of you don't see nothing about hip hop on none of their albums, none of their songs. You know what I mean? It, it's just rap. <laughs> ain't that ain't that a part of hip hop though? Like hip hop is like five phases. I thought it was break dancing. Damn, Lou, you sound art. like me. I thought it was you know rap as well. I'm just trying to figure out what's because rap is a, is an elevation thing too. Like rap changes every few few weeks. So, not weeks, excuse me, years. So, would you consider Migos rap? Like, because I think they're one of the greatest rap groups of all time. Um, yeah, that's rap. But, I mean, that's what I'm trying to figure yeah, out. That's what? rap. But, I mean, I don't, I don't think they're part of the, you know, when you look at the, 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 the salute, the 50 years of hip-hop, you know, it, it's just like if you did a salute to uh, the March on Washington, you're not going to bring on some new jacks. You're going to talk about the people who made this stuff, who built this stuff, who who went through the fire for this stuff. You know what I mean? You got these guys who disrespected these old school rappers. Um, talking about that's why they don't have no money. They don't have this. You know what I mean? Come on, man. Y'all y'all don't even realize what, first, yeah. what, what, what they did to get us to this point. You know, it's just a disrespect. But it just goes to this current generation in general. The disrespect. Well, I think there's several rappers that could actually go modern rappers that could definitely have transitioned. They just got to change their message a little bit. Like, I, one of my favorite rappers, period, is Kendrick Lamar. And I think Kendrick, if he gets on that KRS one tip, he's going to flow. Well, he, he does, though. Yeah. Like, I mean, he, that, well, that's he what does. I'm saying, but he's not in your face with it as much as some of the other. Well, because, and that's, that's what I'm talking about, the elevation of rap, because it's mm -hmm. like, 
realistically, you got to get paid in this. It's an art form that they've monetized. Mm-hmm. So a lot of us kind of look at it, like Lo just said, like you have a lot of younger guys that say, you know, that's why they ain't had no money. It's true. A lot of them don't have no money because they got public Jews enemy, and con- they get big to I mean, they were, you they were respected positive. after the fact. Yeah. yeah, but respect don't pay the bills either. Yeah. So it's like these guys like Kendrick Lamar or J. Cole, they play their position, but mm-hmm. the way they do their wordplay is so subliminal. Mm-hmm. It's ridiculous. You have to go back six, seven times sometimes to hear That's something, Kendrick, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. Or Childish Gabino is one of my favorites, of course. But n- before people were on Nipsey's... All you know, due respect, that has, that, has, that has nothing to do with the money issue. That's just like guys in the NBA make way more money now than guys back in the day did. <laughs> It's the whole, the everything, the market is totally different. It has nothing to do with why them guys don't have the money. You know what I mean? Just things are different now. I think one of the main reasons they, didn't, they don't have or they didn't get the money is, one, they were being educated as they was doing it. Yeah. Um, I, I think more now, the young MCs, rappers, whatever you want to call them, I think that they're more educated in the game of making money. Yeah. And I think that because they're more concerned with making money, that they, they, their lyrics are made for the masses instead of being made as a message. Would you, would you agree? Like, if you know that the masses want to hear, um, um, jump, fuck that trick, um, um, Hit them upside the head um, <laughs> instead of um, 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 get a job, save your mama, um, do something for the community because they're selling. Some of the, I think some of the, well, I, guess I, I think it's I think some of them could actually, like you said, some of them could actually spit, but I think they feel if they spit what was spit back in the day, I think they're not gonna get. But I think, money. It's, but and I as think you said yeah. the corporate thing is not. I think it's go. different because now it's considered music. When a genre, but back then it wasn't. Remember when it first right, came it out, wasn't it wasn't even right. considered. I mean, everybody's like, whoa, whoa. I remember, like, you know, Planet Rock, different songs. And what, what? it's like, it's just totally different. I think there's one artist now that could transcend everything, right. no matter what period, and that's Megan a Stallion. Oh, wait. Uh, let me man. read this comment. <laughs> from, <laughs> um, what is that? Moretta Johnson Ross. I agree with the fact that. The salute to 50 years of hip hop should not include the new age artists. That should be a salute to respecting the history. Also, the old school creators of hip hop helped get corporate involved with their hard work, and now these young guys can eat off big business. Okay, so here's the thing if you're gonna add 50 years, so we gotta do math, that 50 years includes new age, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, then you're welcome. That's the first thing. <laughs> that includes 50 years. We doing math and we gonna keep using 50 years of hip hop. That includes new age. It has to, because realistically, I know I wasn't growing up on, I grew up on Wu-Tang, all right? Mm. I definitely didn't listen to Run DMC, all right? So I, I went from Wu-Tang, Outkast, Goody Mob, UGK, 3-6 Mafia, those were my groups. Then I had underground people here in the city. You had Tilt, mm. Uncle Sam, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Pastor Troy, you had all them folks. So even Rashida. So mm-hmm. I'm looking at it as a thing of you can say don't add them in there, but they helped pave the way for yeah. people like me to go into music and look up people. The old, uh, yeah, because I mean, okay. the people I was listening to were talking about people I had never heard of. So if I listen mm-hmm. to Outkast and they telling me about Run DMC, who's mm-hmm. Run DMC? Because my favorite artist at that time was Andre and Big Boy. So it's mm-hmm. like, yo, okay, who's run DMC for them? Good point. All right. So it's like now I'm taking that energy of them educating me through songs or through interviews mm-hmm. or whatever, mm-hmm. and now I'm learning about my past because that's, that's what I was saying earlier. I would never listen to KRS when I was a kid. So a lot of that mm-hmm. stuff, of course, maturity comes in you when you're getting educated. We all grow up different. So to me, it sounds ridiculous anytime someone says we shouldn't add the new age in I can say what you, I get what you're saying because some mm. of the stuff is just stupid. I can agree. Mm. Some of the stuff is just plain dumb. But a lot of the ones that did come up, I got educated through them from their people. Like, I, would, I knew who LL Cool J was, but I didn't know he was a rapper. 
I seen him on TV before I seen him rapping. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I knew him right in, in the house. That's what I knew. Yeah, Damn, Kujay I forgot from. about that one. He was cool to me because he was like cool. He was just cool. Found out he was a rapper. I was like, what? Now I see him on BT. Like, yo, that's the same dude. Only, oh, what? He can rap too. I would have never did that. Yeah, I see. I, I see your point. I see. Yeah. Your point. So, what, what, who was that? Mark Marretta? Am I saying that Mar name? Mar Mar Mrs. Mrs. Johnson Ross. Hey, Marvetta. now. I, is it Marvetta? I can't see. Is it. that the R? Marretta. Marretta. Okay. Mrs. Johnson Sorry, Ross. I'm just saying. You know, don't be so hard on the youngsters. We got to learn, too. You got to remember, you was 10, 12 before, 20 years old before. You stupid. We don't know nothing. I can admit that I was dumb as hell trying to listen to music. I used to think that Eminem, which I think he's an amazing battle rapper, but he was my favorite rapper for a while. So I realized, I don't think he was doing was killing his mom and his girlfriend 37 times in all his songs. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't rap. That's just a white man that's angry. <laughs> That's, yeah, that's Moretta, man. That's, that's if y'all remember, jo Josh was on the show. That's that's his mom. She was on the show together, so you know, okay. and she and she's in this this industry on a regular basis. But but I, I feel what Ben is saying, and and, and I don't necessarily disagree with some of it. But I think there's a when you when you when you do a tribute to something so special, mm -hmm. you know, again, you know, you got to write pieces together. And putting some guys who are talking about nothing but shooting and killing folks yeah. on everything next to KRS One would be insane and disrespectful. If you put MC Light and Queen Latifah, then you bring up Sexy Red. Come on, man, that's disrespectful. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's, I think you have to you have to put stuff that matches what you're really trying to to accomplish. And again, it, it's it's it's, it's you salute the million, you know, uh, the march on Washington. You bring it up, some some radical guy who talking about, you know, killing folks. It just don't match the conversation. I feel you. Now it's real. All right, um, do this here before we go to break. Marretta said, but there will be Marretta. I'm sorry, I keep saying your name wrong. Marretta said, but there are still artists who don't fit the bill. Nicki Minaj is a must. But sexy red is not necessary. I'm with you, Miss Johnson. I'm gonna call you Miss Johnson just off the Miss Johnson. You are you you if you ain't correct, you you the most you you right. I don't know what sexy red young thug look. I don't I don't like it. I don't love it. I don't know why she exists. I, I it's a, what what Charleston White said. It's a whorish spirit. Yes. I don't agree with it, and I'm not okay with it. <laughs> but right. it's like I said, these there's some good ones, you know. Well, there's a lot of good young rappers out. Like, uh, like, but like I said, uh -oh. I think the rappers are gonna start taking playing it forward because there's a lot of backlash and like little TL, you know, the little eight year old rapper, and sexy red again. A lot of people are getting they're getting blowback, and I think it's gonna cause people like Megan Thee Stallion <laughs> to come out. And I think she's gonna no seriously. I was wondering. What I mean, that she's gonna know because she can spit. You can say she's no, a, she can she's a beautiful woman, but she can straight up flow. Yeah. And I think it's gonna cause people to get deeper and have to you know ne just not look to the beat. I think right now they want to say what's ever crazy, boom. But I think back then, rappers are speaking to us as a people because we were coming out of an era and there was no spoke no spokesperson. It's like everybody that was speaking for us was old and decrepit. And I think rap was the first one that just came out and said, "Boom!" That's what. That's how it hit us. I mean, we. Could, I remember when Public Enemy came out. It was like, "Oh my God!" Everybody, boom, boom, and Karis One was spitting, and it became less of a party, party thing, right. and more of a "This is the message." I got you. Uplifting. Yeah. Power yeah. to the people. It, it was a way they knew for a fact that people was at the party, so they might always give a message while they did. Classic conversations with JT and Lowe. We'll be right back. And this time we're going to talk about cop. New Year's Eve. I mean, New Year's resolutions. Be right back. Uh -huh.